to synchronicity my guest this week is my sister tess lampert making her triumphant return return okay that's what we'll go with this word return uh return to the show uh we talk about crystals crystal consciousness healing power sound and music all these wonderful things and i am going to record another episode with tess about mezcal I, i can't remember if we got into it in this episode if we did that's awesome because it's awesome. And I'm like, I'm a big fan now. I know. And now it's like, it's been um, so trendy for so long, Mezcal, that now it's not cool. That's usually when I get into stuff. Right when it's just ebbing in terms of everyone being like, that's so fucking cool. I'm like, yeah, now that's time for me. You don't think it's cool anymore? I definitely into it. It's like the Bible, guys, right? Like everyone's over the fucking Bible and I'm doing out here doing episodes on the 12 disciples. You know, you know how it is. Someone also pointed out, um, a uh, very good thing, a uh, very, very stupid point about Mary Magdalene and how she's not represented in the 12 disciples. Mary Magdalene was like Jesus's consort. Again, not people, not people. So what that means is, is Jesus, that's like the Shakti energy, right? The divine feminine, right? Also needed for creation and destruction. So those qualities, you know, <laughs> we're balancing those energies, guys. So that's what we're doing. Um, I am out in Los Angeles. Just in case you can't tell, my tweet caliber has gone up. My Instagram story caliber has gone up. I bought a new guitar today. I got it on sale. I'm not going to tell you how much it was because it's an insane amount to spend on. It's not. It's the right amount. I, here's the thing. I had a guitar for 20 years that my mom got me when I was like 14. And it's a great guitar. It's a magic guitar. Taught me so many songs. But it's not what you would call a very good guitar, I just found out. And I was playing on someone else's. Uh, my sister's boyfriends and I was like, or fiance, I should say. And I was like, oh shit, my guitar sucks. And I'm way better at guitar than I thought I was, thought because this is good. So now I went and got myself a nice guitar and I feel good about it, guys. I also just taught myself a new um, tarot spread, the Zodiac wheel. That's cool. Everything's cool. I have stuff I'm supposed to talk about. Um, are you a web designer or developer? who can build a custom site that does stuff that I need you to do? If so, hit me up at noah at syncpodcast.com because I have a project that I'm going to be working on. Um, yeah, so hit me up for that. Uh, should we do, let's, I'm trying to organize. I did not organize this well at all on my sheet of paper. Um, it looks like a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, Join the email list. Is that what I said? Jesus Christ, no. This is no way to do an intro. Oh, the Discord um, is public now, the Crypto Sync. The crypto stuff is walled off, but if you want to join, you can. I'll put a link in this episode for you to be able to do that. Um, and then let's talk about should I do the QA? No, I'll do that for next week's episode. I do want to mention one thing, and it got I got a heavy dose of this, and it's important to mention right off the bat. Um, right off the bat, like three minutes in. Um, yeah, love yourself. It's incredibly important. Every morning when you wake up, I got this from Louise Hay, then the Tafty the Princess stuff was then it's just like I get it when like I'm getting hammered with messages. I'm the type of person who, as intuitive as I can be, I do require getting slapped in the face with shit repeatedly before I'm like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So love yourself. I feel like I may have been omitting this um, as a thing for people to do. It's the most important thing. I wrote a uh, quick little tweet. Fuck, where is it? On the process. Let's see if I can remember it. Uh, the first step is you seek out all barriers in the way of you loving yourself and you destroy them. That's a two-part first step. The second step is you love yourself. And the third step is you love those around you. And then the fourth step is you love everyone. That's why it's the fourth step. That's not an easy one usually for people. And then the fifth step is 
you have a lot of fun or cool as fuck. That's the fifth step. That's the step I'm on in case you can't <laughs> tell. And it's really fun. And it is pretty nuts sometimes, but it's pretty fun and you can help a lot of people that way. So yeah, that's the process, but it does start with loving yourself. Life loves you. So you might as well love yourself because then life will give you gifts and boons for sure. That's just how it works. We're in Sagittarius season. It's a, a great period of expansion and growth. Um, really honor that and uh, set your intentions. I mean, it's good to do for every new moon, but we're going to be heading into Capricorn. There's going to be some gnarly energy, not in a bad way, but opportunities to work with fear, to move through our shit. Um, so start with loving yourself. Very fucking important. Also, what happens when you love yourself is like you stop worrying about fear and stuff. Okay, I guess I will talk about this other shit. Fuck it. Um, make your threshold guardians, like the if, if their fear and doubt and anxiety are popping up in your life, what you can do is uh, tell them, tell those threshold guardians jokes if you're like good at that. If not, you can play them music. They'll calm down and they'll let you go wherever you want. So just remember that there's things we can do. Threshold guardians need love and joy too, even though, you know, have you figured out how to make fear laugh yet? Because if you have, Welcome, friend. It's the fucking best. Um, I think that's it. That's a good intro. Is that a good intro? I guess we should talk about a little bit this episode. Crystal Consciousness. Uh, Tess is my sister. She's incredible. She's the mezcal queen. She is really just, she has been tapped into a lot of this stuff. Like she made fun of me when I started getting into tarot. She's like, yeah, me and mom have been doing this for like 20 years. And I'm like, what? I'm a fucking idiot. What do you want? I was like living in a paternal, authoritative Male dominated hierarchy society. I'm sorry I couldn't tune into my inner feelings sooner, guys. Jeez, Tess. But anyway, she's been clued into this stuff for a long time. I got an incredible reading from Valeria, the Mexican witch, uh, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. And she, at the end of it, was talking about Maya Huel. I think I might have mentioned this. And then my sister, lo and behold, has that name on the pattern after I told her to get it. I was like, what the fuck? So Mezcal is great. The high priestess is great. Everything is really quite wonderful. And even if it doesn't feel wonderful to you right now, recognize that when you really get this shit, it always works out. It always, always works out. And I will also say that um, you can jump cut pretty quickly, but you have to have a high degree of confidence, faith, and knowledge and belief in yourself. And also make sure you're not creating undue suffering, harm, and stress on those around you, but those should not be deterrents from pursuing what you love at any point, but really having, again, the mindfulness and awareness to only pursue the things that will make you fulfilled and happy and pursue. And, you know, if you fuck up a little, it's fine. You can change it. It's no big deal. Um, but anyway, love yourself. That's the whole thing. Uh, yes, crystals, consciousness, Tess is the coolest. I'm not going to give away this episode. She talks about cool stuff. I don't remember it. I didn't re-listen to it right now. I know it's good. I'm going to listen to it after I put it out. Uh, is there anything else? No, there's going to be changes. I, I'm just going to say this here. We're, there's going to be some, uh, a, the synchronicity community is going to turn into something a little more than it is now. It's going to be a little more tangible. There's going to be benefits. There's going to be like some clear cut. Um, it's going to be fucking cool. I've been fleshing it out with a couple of friends and yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping to get it launched, this element of it um, in 2020. Also, I have merch now for people who've been asking. I'm just like, I have the the site already. I just, um, I want to nail down the designs and I'm going to see Ramin later this week. I'm going to see if I can't get him to do some other stuff for me. I know I'm sure he's like so busy, but you know, I know you guys love, love the synchronicity stuff and the logo he designed is really cool. And I know people have been asking for hoodies and hats and it's easy. I, I used to do this shit before for other people. So I have it all set up. That's going to be launching soon. Stay tuned for that if you're interested. Um, and I'm only going to use like, listen, some people sell the shitty quality shirts because like the margin is higher. My shirts will most likely be priced a little bit more than like a regular shirt. Like it's looking to be in like the hoodies, like the 40, $45 range and the hats like 25. Um, you know, it's going to be a little more expensive, but I'm not going with the cheap shit. I like good stuff. So I want to have at least a minimum level of like premium quality shit. So you know, if enough people are like, no, I want the shitty stuff and I want it cheaper, cheaper, then I can do that too. But that's going on. So stay tuned for that. Uh, stay tuned for a lot of stuff. Going to be recording a lot of fun episodes. I'm out here. I got me and me guitarra 
It's great. Super stoked. If you're a musician in LA, um, hit me up if you want to do some stuff. Also, I'm recording spaces, looking for those. If anyone has a connect or any ideas, um, you know, shit's great. <laughs> Fucking love it. Uh, okay, without further ado, long intro. Tess Lampert, she's my sister. You're going to love her. She was on a previous episode. Go check that one out. I think it was about food, maybe. I don't remember. Uh, without further ado, here is Tess Lampert. Check. Check. Say it like like you were saying a little too loud. Too loud. All right. That'll do. Okay. What are we talking about? Crystal consciousness? Crystals? You start with this. Sure. Oh, okay. Here I go. <laughs> yeah. There's no, I don't do the introduction <laughs> on the episodes. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll start with my relationship with crystals and rocks which uh, stones stones yep mm -hmm. um at this point most of my possessions are crystals rocks and shells that is the thing that i have most of in this world more than clothes more than clothes um clothes and shoes combined more than clothes and shoes combined yep i think that you know my partner might be a little suspicious of that statement but in uh, in sheer volume and certainly in like valuables, valuables. Um, definitely, most of my possessions are are rocks of some sort. Um, I've always really liked rocks. I always felt really drawn to them. I think most children go through a phase where they're super into like yeah, I did the too. worry stones. That's pretty typical. Um, yeah. And it stayed pretty constant. I remember when I was traveling. I, I traveled a lot. Did you say worry stone? Yeah, like a smooth little stone that you get and you're like, huh. you rub this when you're worried. Oh, I never heard of that. Yeah, they're just little rocks. It's, you know, the same thing. Okay. Um, I remember that I would always get, I would bring back little pieces of stones or shells or even pottery um, from everywhere I went. I remember when I was in Israel and we were like walking on the ruins of ancient um ancient temples i i picked up some of the tiles which was probably a no-no um but i have little bowls full of rocks from all over actually those those ones from israel i have in a little ceramic bowl that you made in elementary school oh yeah that's those are with my it's with my sacred objects um the the one you just picked up is made out of clay and it's a figurine of a ball player from Mexico. It's from Monte Alban. Oh, is that the thing they the, like the Aztecs mm -hmm. where they put the he through the heads between they thought there was heads. The ball game. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I I've always collected rocks. I really like them. And then I I kind of chilled on it for a little while. Uh. And then it came back really strong when I connected to the quartz crystal bowls. For sound healing. Right. So I got into that a couple of years ago and like really went full force with it. And that is when I really awoke to the whole crystal consciousness thing. What is that? So crystals are conscious, right? The, every, I mean, you could say everything is conscious, right? So crystal consciousness is a particular consciousness that is becoming uh, more recognized, more important. You know, people are using crystal and tapping into crystal consciousness to raise their vibrations. Think about time, right? People don't think about this, but if you think about what actually powered watches, absolutely, quartz uh, watches, recordings, yeah. old recordings, you would swing a quartz crystal around because it yeah. was grounding. We forget this, but quartz in particular and crystal is kind of a key element in yeah. all of our technology. Yeah, it's because it's a grid. And it interlaces and it's kind of like each node or nexus point in the grid is connected to all the other ones. And it's like this whole thing. So, and we are, as humans, we are crystalline beings. Our bone structure is crystal. Mm. Our bones are made of crystal. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, what kind of crystal? Bone? Bone crystal. <laughs> um, and our blood, right? So like water and everything 
also has a crystalline structure. Yeah. 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 Right. So we, we are very literally crystal. So crystal consciousness is one of the things that a lot of people are paying attention to and tapping into right now. Um, How and, does one do that? Well, I think a lot of people do it intuitively. Um, I think the the sound healing with the quartz crystal bowls. Right, right. A lot of people feel really uh, feel the power of that. Or even to like Tibetan singing bowls too. Even the Tibetan singing bowls. Well, that's vibration. That's not crystal, but it is the same vibration principle. What's, okay. Because it's made out of metal, not crystal. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's you know there are there are rocks that are metal like pyrite right. and things yeah obsidian um, is that a rock obsidian yeah um, I have a cool obsidian somewhere uh, it gets over here it's oh yeah rainbow obsidian ooh yeah it might be a little hard to see over there without the light but um, that's that's from Mexico as well that's nice um, so. Uh, yeah, the crystal consciousness is cool. A lot of people are tapping into it consciously or unconsciously. Um, and then you know, kind of concurrently with that, I got way into like the actual physical crystals, right? Like buying crystals from miners, like lots of them directly from the mine, and then um, very synchronistically connecting with other people who sell high quality crystals right. kind of direct from the source. Right. Um, and I found myself with a inventory <laughs> of uh, pretty special pieces. And you, you're looking at my crystal grids right now, which yeah. has always come very intuitively to me and is awesome. Eli, you said, was good at it too, yep. right? Eli was in here not too long ago. And he, again, very intuitively just picked up immediately my central shaman stone, um, which is you know hard to choose because it's very nondescript. I have some pretty rare expensive beautiful pieces and it's not any of those and is he's it this one no it's what's not. this that one is actually one of the the least, least valuable yeah. yeah well to me um and he goes let's put this one back up here with the other ones which one is it um see if you can guess no i don't want to do that game just tell me it's the um turquoise yeah you weren't even looking at it yeah um and then he also just switched around the direction of a couple of things like that rose quartz um double point was pointed the other way and he just super intuitively switched it he picked up the um the turtles mm. which you know have are very particular meaning to me mm. and he's like this is the coolest one no this is the coolest one and he adjusted the tall towers in the back ever so slightly cool just so the energy would flow better cool and it's cool because i other than him i don't really let people come in you know, yeah, I don't touch this stuff. Touch with my grids. Yeah. I don't touch this stuff. No, of course. Because you, you know, intuitively you're like, this isn't for me to play with. I did Though use the, that to poke weed down. Yes, you did. That's okay. You asked first, so that was respectful. The um that time I asked. The tree of <laughs> the tree of life over there. That one we can we can mess around with. That one's more experimental. Malleable. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um so yeah, that's a little bit of, and I've been up to that and then making malas. I made you a beautiful mala. Yes. You should take that with you or have it close by. The blue one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eli has that now, I think. Okay. He Not takes really. it. I know. No. He just takes, he takes okay. those things. He goes, yeah. he kind of just like takes the crystals and does that right. stuff. Right. Um, But... All right, but how did you start recognizing the, let's say, more ethereal or etheric nature of crystal consciousness um, and then relating that to the physical? Yeah, like that. what's that process? Because for me, I've you know this, I've always had stones and crystals. I gravitate towards them, even like the pricey stores in the city and shit. Like I just like them wherever I go. It's something I want to do intuitively. But like a lot of things, until I understand it, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing it. I'm just like, oh, I like this. I want these. This is good. And then after the fact, I'll like learn about something and be like, oh, it makes perfect sen sense that that's what I'm doing. So how do you, how do you begin to navigate what's right for you, how you pick something, what its function is? Like, what is that process like? Well, I think it's a lot. It, it can be one of two things. And I tend to do the same thing that you do as I really let my passions guide me. Mm -hmm. um, and then once it's clear that there's a deeper 
you know, mm. something going on, I educate myself. So, um, the, the crystal bowls for sound healing was what broke in there. I mean, this was one of the few things in my life that I was like, yeah, 100%. I know this is for me. I know I have to pursue it full force. Yeah. You were really committed yeah. as soon as it, yeah, immediately. And it feels good when you find things like that. Yeah. Tell me about it. Um, so, <laughs> and so that kind of um, reintroduced me to the whole world of crystal. And now as an adult, you know, I have obviously more, uh, options to engage with it. And then I started, um, experimenting and exploring and using my intuition to, to buy different crystals and feel, feel their energy and all of that. And I'm pretty sensitive to their energy. I remember one in particular, I got it and I had it in my hand and my hand literally started, shaking the vibration mm. was so strong mm. and i was like mm, am i doing this to myself and i tried to stop and i couldn't it was it was intense um so i think for some people you can kind of feel that connection right something speaks to you and and you use your intuition i think that works really well with crystals even for people who feel like they have trouble listening to their intuition yeah crystals because are, you can kind of just tell when it's in your hand yeah. yeah, you can you can tell. And, and that's the advice that everyone mm. always gives for picking out crystals. Pick it up, Left feel hand. it. Like yeah. It's always told. Um, so crystals are very powerful. They are literally condensed energy. energy. Yeah. And they're a physical form of this energy where a lot of the other energy people are tapping into is more etheric or it's not physical. It's not as easy that you can't pick it up. It's not tangible. Right. Um, they're also very beautiful to us. So they offer us a really easy, convenient, kind of gentle way of connecting with these strong universal powers. Can I touch this one? Yes, you can touch all of them. Um, this one's cool. Yeah. And so I think that it comes naturally to people to choose them intuitively. And then some people who don't want to or or We'll look for like a quality. We'll, we'll look to someone who can listen to them and recommend something uh, I see. right based on the certain properties of different crystals because i don't know them for myself but i know people who do like i always appreciate someone with like the finer knowledge of right. these things because they like you know it's funny like i was thinking about this today how before i really like opened the floodgates to my intuition just like consciously engaging with it i would always look at like mediums or psychics and i would know that they weren't not all of them were bullshitting, but like I could tell, but like still I'd be like, how, like, how do they know they're not just bullshitting themselves? And right. then there does, it, that point happens where you go, oh, like this is a hundred percent not bullshit. And I actually can discern the difference of me like being like a weirdo in my head and actually like letting my intuition guide me. And I feel like the stones, you know, it's just another aspect of reality that's unlocked as you kind of recognize the power of imagination or awareness, whatever you want to call it, because- then like you said, it's these physical representations of energy that can help us if we're aware of our internal states. Like I, I, I was saying this with like meat the other day. I was like, you know, I don't judge it anymore if I want some meat because maybe I'm just getting a little too dreamy and airy and I need some groundingness and I'm not going to judge something. I also have to be aware of the distinction of just being like, I like meat, I want to eat it all the time. <laughs> but like there is this property that physical things can provide us if we're engaging with the world of duality, which we are. I just want to be clear because you don't, there's right. another level of this where this is all just like fun and games. Well, exactly. So just like any of the other modalities like tarot or astrology or any of that, it's not, crystals aren't necessary. They're not going to give you anything you don't already have. Right. But they are fun. They do help. That's the whole, you know, enjoyment of being human is to be able to interact with these things in a in a way that is satisfying and and it re they really do add beauty to to your space and to your oh, life. Yeah. I mean, I feel I have that giant amethyst. Um I am lucky enough to have a partner who not only um deals with my crystal obsession but he, he gets on board you know we both he likes it we were at a crystal show and we both saw this giant amethyst and we were like oh yeah that's that's an appropriate pur purchase it's and then, huge it's huge we also then shortly after that we're in a store and we saw a 400 pound petrified wood stump and both of us were like yep gotta have it um <laughs> which we managed to carry into our house on our own it was impressive 400 pounds yeah it was it was 
But he's you, yeah, he's like a you know Mexican engineer basically. <laughs> so that's I nice. said to him about the the amethyst. I was like, if you weren't Mexican, I wouldn't buy it because I wouldn't trust anyone else to move yeah, this into the house. Exactly. Exactly. It's a, it's like a Mexican superpower. It's like you can just do anything pretty much. Um, but these, I, I noticed a difference when we brought it into our space. And at that time we lived in a small studio in New York city, everything changed. I mean, it was subtle, but it was like, all of a sudden we were way, it's, you know, an amethyst, we were like way more open and loving mm. and we could feel the energy of the crystal. It was very cool. You think maybe also it's like reflecting your own consciousness back at you and that's what they do more than actually emanate the energy is that because my understanding of how everything works here is even other people are at best mirrors. Like there's no real tent. And like, I'm not going to you and be like, you're not real. I'm the only real thing. It's just like everything is a mirror in this reality. And I think one of the reasons that crystals and stones and these things work is because they energetically have these patterns that bounce and reflect back our own innate consciousness. But we can like, in the same way that the gods do or anything else, like I believe that the gods exist. And right. you know what I mean? Like in the same way, but I feel like maybe that's part of what's going on. Too. I think definitely it also, that's where we get into the distinctions between types of uh, varieties of crystals, right? right? Because Let's go into that. quartz is an amplifier. So yeah, absolutely. If if you're working with a quartz or if you have a big quartz, it's 100% going to amplify. Um, reflect and amplify. Yes, reflect and amplify. I mean, I'm saying like, I think everything would reflect. Everything reflects, but so amethyst is essentially quartz with other composites in it that give it the purple color. Uh, so as it's reflecting back, it's being filtered imbued. through those other composites Perfect. with their own vibration. So that it's like tuned to other things. So uh, like love and open heartedness, it, it picks up on that. So that that's a really powerful amplifier of, of love and open heartedness and tranquility. Whereas uh, clear quartz will amplify and reflect back pretty much everything. Is this amethyst? That is amethyst. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I love amethyst. It's my birthstone. I've always loved it. So that Veracruz amethyst right there, right in front, um, Veracruz, Mexico, um, has is known for this really gemmy, super clear. It's really nice. Bright. Yeah, clear, but purple still. Violet. Yeah, yeah, like um, like a lot of clarity to the to the yeah, stone. That's really nice. Yeah, Veracruz amethyst is awesome. I definitely am going to be getting more of those. Um, they're expensive. They're also, wouldn't expensive. you say that crystals go really well with psychedelics and weed? Yeah, because then you can tap into their energy. With psychedelics, your your vibration is much closer to the crystal vibration, crystal consciousness. So you're like really vibing with them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they also go well with plants. plants. You know, you can decorate your home pretty with much. We decorate with crystals and I've plants. I've seen that. I've yeah, seen that. That's that's our <laughs> going that's our into vibe. various places yeah. here. It's just. It's, it's nice though. I always think really I'm like, nice. this is really nice. You have sand with these. Is that cacti? Um, those are succulents. Yeah. Uh, succulents. Yeah. Our little terrarium. My friend. Jill, did you speak with Jill? Yeah. No, I'm gonna call her later. Uh, she hey, is a cacti <laughs> wizardress. Um, she showed me all of her cacti yeah. that she grows because it's L.A. Like, there's only right. so much you can grow. Um, wow. I know. I'm, I'm just I, starting to propagate some. And I saw, and she told, she's the succulent buds. She showed me how she just like picks them from like yeah. random places. And then she's like, you don't have to buy them. They just grow. Yeah. That's what um, I'm starting to propagate. Yeah. So she, uh, oh, fuck, what was the other thing? No, I also watched for the first time Hamilton's Pharmacopia. It's like a Vice Land. I don't love Vice stuff typically, but it's really good. Yeah. Um, and it was the episode where he takes uh, um, San Pedro or peyote. Yeah. And, Peyote is cool. Yeah, peyote is cool. I want to do. Have you done peyote? Um, I have peyote infused mezcal. Okay, that's you have like everything infused mezcal. Definitely. So, <laughs> but actually, I was thinking about it on uh, today, so we could try some. Right, but I'm gonna have some. Is what I'm saying. You're. Does it to actually well. make you? Is it like peyote? It's like a microdose. Nah, all right, I'll do that. But I also want to take actual peyote. Yeah, I have some friends um, and like who, a where peo peyote grows on their land. Um, so because it's going away, apparently. 
not on my friend's land. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when the guy's <laughs> talking about it. They're like showing all this stuff, digging up and like, yeah, in mass it is, but I feel like the people who are actually still connected with it, like have more than ever. So it's like, yeah. I'm there's, not really worried about There's places where there's really big ranches and parcels of land and all sorts of things where there's really healthy biodiversity. So I, uh, it's not like open to the public. It's not like the mountain in Oaxaca where everyone where knows where you could just walk around the mushrooms. Right. It's like, you know, if you're supposed to have it, then it's going to be in your life somehow. It's like the Buffalo, you know, there's a lot of Buffalo around these right. parts. And then now you have to go buy it at Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best <laughs> Buffalo around town. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I want to do peyote is what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know how we got on that. Uh, okay. Back to the crystals. It's because I was thinking about the peyote mezcal. Uh, it's buzzing around up yeah. here. Oh, because the succulents and the plants right. and the crystals. Right. What else goes good with crystals? Um, well, uh, definitely plants, definitely psychedelics, um, meditation, Right. What is meditation to you? Because I was oh, just mentioned this today. Yeah. So, well, meditation for me is is not necessarily what it is for everyone, but for me, I really like um, kind of classic meditation, like uh, trying to observe my thoughts and uh, you find, like that and find a quiet space. I find it helpful. I don't like it. I don't, I don't okay. like I enjoy it. You want to hear my take on meditation? I, I guess I'm done describing what I like <laughs> meditation. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, you're one of the only people who will call me out on that shit. Keep, keep going. Um, God, I wonder how many times I do that to guests and they're just like, okay, I guess I'm done talking. <laughs> um, the other, I really, I really like the loving kindness meditation. That's a good one. Yeah. That one's closer to real meditation. That one's good. And then I also consider the, you know, imagining That's a form meditation. of meditation. Yep, so, yep. oh, and obviously sound. I mean, sound mm -hmm. is the main way that I meditate. I come in here usually once a day at least and even if it's five minutes before i start my day yeah it's I, incredible i, I mean sang, i yeah. singing people are going to wake up soon to the power of using your voice making sound it doesn't have to sound beautiful that is meditative physically etherically spiritually all of the ways and it feels so good it stimulates your immune system so sound is my the way that i connect with meditation the the deepest um but you know i do some of the other stuff too and it, physical meditation for me is more like um um like fascia release craniosacral or qigong makes sense so those are my takes on meditation so correct everything is meditation literally everything when you realize that what you can stop doing which is what i used to do is close my eyes and fight with my mind for however long i said i was going to be meditating that's dumb stop doing that if you think that's meditating if like you think there's a smart wise teacher who told you to do that and you're just sitting down and fighting with yourself it's actually pointless like you might understand that maybe your mind is a little out of control but you're you're basically just closing your eyes and fighting with yourself when you realize that everything in life is actually the opportunity to be aware and provide some feedback, that's meditation. So you're constantly meditating, which is why I like all your answers, because you named like a whole bunch of shit. And it is just naturally doing that. I agree about the voice stuff and sound. I think podcasts are a part of that. I think music is a part of that. Um, so yeah, I think people are waking up to that reality too. And I think what's cool is how you can combine the crystals with the sound, um, but also the earthen elements and the metals and the woods and things like that. Um, can you talk a little bit about the sound and the crystals? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the quartz crystal bowls um, are inspired by the Himalayan metal singing bowls. Um, they're a more contemporary version of that and, uh, they are different. Metal is super grounding, right? And that's pretty intuitive to understand. Um, you know, it's heavy, it's rich, Dense. it comes from inside the earth, you know, it's, it, it's very grounding. Uh, and the metal bowls are used, really placed very close and on the body, I just mm -hmm. had an amazing sound healing private session. With Leah, who's been yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, Leah is amazing. It was great. Um, 
And those those produce vibrations that you really feel very, very close to you or literally on your body. And you can go very deep. And it also, when they're placed like right by your head, it just instantly gets you into a state. Yeah. It's so much easier and feels so much better than like you said, sitting quietly and fighting with your mind. Because that's not meditation. Well, it is because everything is meditation, but that's what people think they're doing is an abstraction. They're abstracting a natural process. And it's just weird to, I don't know exactly how it happens. And I don't want to be judgmental of people who find themselves and have found benefit from like a traditional meditation path or meditative path. But I know intuitively that I could have sat there for fucking 90 years doing that and I wouldn't have made one into progress. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's not that effective for a lot of people in contemporary society, Western society. It, it just isn't effective. And because we're so overworked, we're so tied to our to-do list, It that kind of meditation and even yoga sometimes ends up being one more thing on our to-do list and it stresses us out. If your meditation is stressing you out, yeah. try a different form of meditation. Or just wake up and realize what you're naturally doing yeah, is mean, your meditation. People don't want to hear that because if they're- It's difficult. It's not. Okay. It, it's difficult if you keep thinking that it's something that you're not doing. But if you just wake up and are like, yo, I'm stuck in traffic. This is my meditation now. It's like, right. yo, I have right. to rush to this place. Do I or can I be aware of my thought projections and maybe be a little bit more patient and try to figure out the reasons I feel rushed? My point is, is like, you get to move the needle around with your awareness and that, trust me, is way more potent and powerful, especially like if you look at the Tibetan meditative things, like they're very similar, but their eyes are open. Right. That is not because, you know, that's because it's trying to show you something. Like there's no real difference when you're closing your eyes, like this world is also the same thing. So, yeah. so I think with the sound, for those people who do find it difficult, um, it's a really quick way to just kind of disrupt those mental functions that are standing in their way. Like the first time a, a bowl is hit and you hear those overtones and undertones, mm. it literally reshapes the connection between the hemispheres of your brain and you are in a meditative state. The vibrations yeah. that they produce um, affect the brain. It's brain entrainment. You get into these, it's like binaural beats. It, it physically and gently Shifts. prompts your, yeah. your whole body, your brain, your hormone producing organs um, to vibrate in a way that is uh, conducive to your natural ability to heal yourself. So the crystal in particular is really working with the more etheric realms. It's very ethereal. It's like a lot of crown chakra. Um, it's it's really nice for people when they um, are looking for that creative energy. Um, I am naturally pretty head in the clouds. Like I need more of the grounding energy because the other stuff comes very easily to me. I need. I to think we looked at your chart. You had what one earth sign and. Yeah, yeah one earth sign. Me, me too. Um, but so it makes sense that I'm super drawn to the crystal. But it, I, what I, what I want to say to that because a lot of your listeners, I'm sure, are very familiar with their energy and and um, connections to different elements. Even being someone who needs more grounding, um, there's no contraindications. It's not like this is not good for me when I need grounding. The crystal, even though it's like high up on you know those higher chakras, etheric. Um, airy, it's still really nice. It's not going to hurt me. I just need to balance it with like drums or my voice because your voice can ground you as well. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's just, it kind of breaks open those creative waters. Um, it's very mm. soothing to, on, to your energy body. So people, even people who have a harder time connecting their logical understanding and their energetic evolve, evolving um, respond really well to the the crystal bowls because you're put into an in-between state of consciousness and it feels really, really good. It's our natural state. It occurs to me when you're saying all this stuff too that like I think one of the reasons the guitar I have here has helped me so much is it's wood and metal. Mm -hmm. And that is what I literally, I like you naturally am in tune with the ethereal stuff but my way of transmuting it and grounding myself is through the guitar, through the wood and the metal, and my voice, which mm -hmm. then offer, allows it to be in the world. 
Yeah. Right. You're pulling down what you're experiencing in yeah. those higher realms and transmuting it to put it out into this yeah. world. So, so I think for me, a lot of it is a lot of my energetic power is like very, very high up. It's like the, it's mostly grounded in the etheric world. So by using the crystal, I can take what's going on on a level that honestly, I don't really have a whole lot of conscious understanding of as a human mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. put it through this other still high chakra etheric tones and vibrations um and you know mm. it, it's it's helpful i i really i enjoy so much being able to offer sound to people and i get really good responses yeah you're the last the other night that was fucking amazing yeah yeah and it's it's again it's one of those in your things. voice that was really cool too yeah thanks yeah um it's one of those things i just knew that i needed to do it i knew i was gonna be excellent at it and be able to help people and um it's a good time it's, i feel really really happy to be more connected with that crystal consciousness and now having having access it's become clear to me that i'm also going to be distributing crystals mm -hmm. actual you physically know, physical crystals raw crystals from the earth sometimes polished to people um i'm going to be a connector and a bridge of of getting those energetic pieces to the people they're supposed to be with for right now. And I think one of the cool things about this too is as reflectors of energy and their own kind of filters that they have, we can imbue and tune the crystals for specific people. Like I think of this, like a lot of people, um, uh, um, like the weed, the, one of the coolest things I ever heard about, medical cannabis was there was this couple who grew plants they were like a met they people would come in for a consult with like oncology stuff like serious shit and they'd go through their symptoms and then they'd go okay and come up with like a profile like a canna cannabis profile and then they would literally custom grow one plant for that person based on those symptoms and essentially like tune it to the vibratory healing modality they needed from the cannabis for that person based on their symptoms. And I was like, holy shit, that's cool. The same thing I believe is what we do with the crystals, right? I mean, you can, if you know this is going to be ending up with someone, you don't have to know the person, but you tune the crystal and then the person finds it and they're like, oh shit. Like that's for me. Yeah. There are a couple of ways to approach this. Okay. So you can, um, clear the crystal and just have it be energetically neutral, which sometimes people might prefer because they want to put, put their, their own, own shit energy. Yeah. yeah. But you can absolutely, you know, again, you know, you could, you could have a smoky quartz. That's why I like also to buy straight from the miners because they do come out, you know, they've been through one person, the person who pulled them out of the ground. And they're probably not like, no, they're about, specifically not. They're yeah, like, they're we like, are wholesaling this, this stuff. Not. Here it is. No, they're cool people who understand what's going on. No, but they're not on, thinking but. about the ethereal aspects of the stuff. Well, they, they recognize them, but they're also not imbuing it because they know that there's a demand for people who want it's Clean. straight from the earth. I got you. So I have those and, you know, those I can either pass on in their neutral state or imbue them, you know, tune them with a with a sound healing session um, or or a, charge them up with the full moon and a selenite plate. So you we can charge them up. We can, um, you know, tune them to a frequency uh, and with an intention of being very protecting. Right. Or very cleansing. So you can absolutely do that. Um, it's so when you're buying crystals, you want to at least know what you're getting, it, where it's coming from, how they're treating them. Um, and if you don't know, then it's always a good idea to purify them and cleanse them when you get them, unless you know it's been specifically tuned um, in a way that you are looking for. So yeah. that's 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 how I operate with them. Um and, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's nice a lot. I didn't know how to do it at first. I didn't uh. really read books to begin with. I just had them around and then it would be a full moon and all of us, I would be like meditating or something. And all of a sudden it was almost like I was possessed. Mm. I would get flashes of like 
put this crystal here in the full moon on this plate right. in this order. I and I was like, like, whoa, okay. So now then I researched it a little bit and now I know what I'm doing, you know, intuitively and then also as a protocol. Because you retro. That's the only way I really trust. Um, not only way, but one of the ways I really trust my, the, the, I use like the internet as a confirmer. Yes, exactly. Rather than being the thing that drives me to it because like it's not, and not that one is better than the other. Like sometimes I'll Google something and be like, oh, amazing. I'll just have like an idea in my head and I'll Google it and I'll find out more about it. But I do find when you naturally are drawn to do things ritualistically or some way like that, like it's better for the confirmation to come after because then you're, you, there's no doubt. Then it's right. like, you know, you're like, right. someone else made this and that's why it works. It's like, no, I was clearly in tune with something. Exactly. And and w- usually when those kind of like clairvoyant things come to me, they're, they're really strong and clear. Yeah. There's no, there, you know, there's no doubt, but no I do. No hemming and hawing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'm listening. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's a little bit of how I work with them. Um, what would you say to, for someone who. Because this happens a lot with the readings I do is it's a lot of first timers. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because A, this is somewhat new for me, but B, I think I have, I, I like, I'm normal about it. I'm not like, I'm going to be weird talking to ghosts and dead people. Sure. And, which, just to be clear, are like my favorite types of readings. Yeah. But I have an ability to communicate what's going on and why it works for the person. So what about someone who's like never had a crystal or a stone, but this is like kind of piquing their interest and they're like, Hey, maybe I want some of these. What do you recommend for them in terms of like finding something they want or what to tune into or what to pay attention to internally? Like how, what would you say? I would say that it's really important not to overthink it when you're starting out. The nice thing about crystals, um, even in some cases, you know, not to be derogatory, but even more so than like an astrological reading or a tarot card s- spread, something like well, that. Well, it's going to be with you. It's a physical thing. It's a physical thing of beauty. So even at, you know, just like a plant, right? Plants are absolutely conscious and we're interacting with them all the time. Um, but a lot of people are like, that plant looks cool. I want it in my dining room. Right. Right. You can, you can also do that with, with the crystal. Physi- the yeah. physicality of it. Yeah. Is you so can important. just be like, that one looks pretty and that's why I want it. And oftentimes, if we're doing that, it looks pretty to us because our intuition or our other consciousness is like, that's the one that's going to be good for you. Well, also, isn't it, and for some of us, at least I know this for me, as someone who's just now really taking my own desires and kind of like physical sensory input as like appreciating it, which is paradoxical because I deny my senses when it doesn't conform to my imaginal reality, but then I super appreciate it when it, when I'm, anyway, um, Crystals seem like they would also be a good entry point for people to maybe who have like weird relationships with money because, you know, they don't want to buy stuff and they don't want things that like, oh, I want this new car. I want these things. And I know that's a game that people play, but crystals, it's like, hey, not only is this energetically useful for you, but it also looks good. And now you're going to start to get comfortable with having like pretty nice things around you, whereas before maybe you were kind of denying that. For yourself, you know. Yeah, what I mean? it's also so two two things. The, uh, going off of what you just said, there's also like if you if if you fit into what Noah just said, um, I highly recommend you get a nice piece of pyrite, which is also known as like fool's gold. It looks like gold. Um, it's awesome. It's not gold. It's pyrite, and it is known to. It's like a warrior stone, and it's a money stone. Put it on your desk. Put it in your car. So it will attract money. But it will also be a visual cue for you. And every time you see it, you'll start attracting money. Mm. So that, I mean, it it ties into all of this. Um, You can keep it in your pocket. You can keep it in your briefcase. Um, You you know what I mean? So you can absolutely use the crystals, which is the other way to go about dipping a toe in, is getting, getting something or seeking it out based on something that you want, right? So... Or let's say you have a, an astrological reading or a tarot card spread and there's some advice, right? Or let's say it becomes clear to you that, you know, you want to open your crown chakra for more creativity or you want to engage your solar plexus or whatever it is, your root chakra to be grounded or whatever it is. You can search out 
a stone or a crystal that is attuned with the space you're trying to right. work on or attract. Um, and so you can use that as a guide, as a parameter, because if you're looking at a selection of crystals, it can get overwhelming. So, so if you need a little bit more um, of a specific set to choose from, you can pick a couple, like one or two different types and then pick from that. Right. Uh, but yes, it is once you, the one thing is they can get pretty addictive. Once you get yeah. into them, they're so cool. Yeah. I've noticed that. I mean, <clears throat> I only have a few with me and I do like to do this process of like giving things and letting them go physically. But I do know what you mean. Like you can want there. There's something very attractive. And I do think it's because when you find a crystal that resonates with you, it's you resonating with you just because if we're going to break this down, like I don't even believe this physical reality is really all that real. It's just kind of like a movement of the mind internally. So I just feel like it's a fun thing to have around you. And like I can just say from being up in this room, this is where I've been spending most of the days like is clearly shit going on in here yeah everyone <laughs> feels it no one has come into this room and not been like whoa yeah this room is cool i just naturally was hanging up hanging yeah, out of here of course of course um yeah, yeah this room is amazing i had a vision for this room and then i made the reality happen because this is yeah. the kind of room that i need to have right now um but yeah it, it, when you find it, it's also important to remember that the the crystal is resonating with you and some of them will resonate with you longer. Some of them won't. Um, you you don't own it, right? It, it's with you right now until it doesn't need to be with you. Like yeah. I have that amethyst heart over there that I got from someone because they were like, I've had this for a really long time and it's ready to move on. Yeah. And I was like, I think it's ready to move on to me. And I'm almost ready to have to pass it on to the next person. Right. So you definitely, if you feel moved to pass a crystal on, like, absolutely. Um, I I often will put, like, a, a small crystal in my pocket. Like, I'll get a flash before I leave the house. Right, that someone will want And I don't know yeah. who it is. And then I, I it's happened to me a couple of times where I meet a new person, like the significant other of a friend or someone, and I'm like, oh, I you. have something for you. Yes. Um, and it's also a way that I stay connected to people that are far away from me. Like, mm. I, I tuned... Um, and this happened to me on the last full moon. I got this super strong whole picture and I tuned up these two crystals for my best friend who was about to give birth for the first time. And I gave it to her and I was like, we can be connected even more. Like we're always connected anyway, but through this crystal. Um, and that's been really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're like physical beacons that can be linked up to energetically. In yeah, this you can space. use them to store energy, and that's what they do. Like the Lemurians, yeah, that come from Brazil, um, that have the striations on on the sides. Those are said to contain wisdom. They they were basically like computer chips right. of the ancient civilization, so that the people that have them now can get the downloads from, from those crystals. Them. The information is literally. In the crystal. That's what are these why there's, big pillars you have? Those are selenite and they're lamps. Oh. So we just have to put a bulb and a and like a dial on them and then oh. they'll light up. So selenite is is um it's like rockified light. It's light in rock form. That's cool. So it filters everything. It's it's really luminescent. Um so to have them as big lamps, we're gonna put them on in our bedroom on on the night tables. I just unpacked them. They're what, pretty awesome. Um, what are some of your favorite crystals and stones? Right now, I should say. Um, well, I love really high quality um, quartz, clear quartz points from Brazil. I'm super into those. Veracruz, Amethyst, Lemurians. I definitely super resonate with Lemurians. So those are, I'm going to be working with those a lot. Um, Smokies, I feel like, but I feel like more of a connector of people with Smokies. Mm. Um, and, uh, um, uh, Obsidian, I always really like. Jade, but I don't have a lot of jade in my life. A lapis, it, lapis is my like my my stone. Yeah, like I, I, that's one I brought here. My small, one of my smallest, most nondescript crystals. Like you can see, I have a nice collection. Is a little tiny, um, like lapis 
it's not a pyramid, but it's like a triangular 3D shape. Yeah, I have a pyramid. Eli totally picked that up and was like, this is the most special one. I was like, yes, it is, Eli. Yeah. Um, that like lapis for me is super important. Um, and then uh, turquoise, lapis and turquoise, which mm. connect me with my um, Egyptian mm. roots. I have a lot a- of what I do is from from Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Explain that. Um, well, I have always been just kind of in tune with the, uh, ancient Egyptian cults, I guess. I don't know the, the wisdom. Yeah. Um, and I actually wrote my, my thesis in, in my undergrad about the Egyptian book of the dead. Oh shit. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, and then when I started uh, experimenting a little bit more with hallucinogens for like medicinally and spiritually, I would go on journeys back to um, ancient Egypt. And a lot of my guides are are Egyptian in nature. And it's, it's one of the places where I draw a lot of my wisdom and like um, ability to work with energy that I, that I am conscious of. Mm. Uh, I know there are other ones, but I am not conscious of them. I, I don't really, I can't see where it's coming from, but the Egyptian roots, um, I'm very aware of. Uh, so, and then, you know, the ancient Egyptians used to use crystals mm-hmm. and they had Onks. a better understanding. Yeah. And there were crowns and staffs and you could line them up. And that's actually where a lot of things, that's why a lot of the knowledge is, um, submerged now because it's kind of started like a black magic war essentially mm. people were like oh cool i line these crystals up in this order and use imagination mm-hmm. my thoughts and i can very easily manipulate reality and you know not everyone does that for the highest good mm-hmm. so that's why we now don't uh, most of us have access to um those techniques, techniques sometimes i get yeah. flashes of how to do it like I know how to build the crown and I know how, what order to put them in. Um, I, that usually happens to me in altered states of consciousness and I don't write it down and probably got to write it down. I know I'm working on, I or have, I have two that I'm record. working on. Um, but I think that I don't write them down. They come to me and I know that I have something to work out with that, but I think that I haven't yet because it, I think it'll, it'll manifest when it will do so safely. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I don't want to like create something that's then going to be, you know, used for like the atom bomb. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to create the crystal version of the atom bomb, but I think I can maybe create something that can help people. Well, I'm sure when they were building the atom bomb or the principles of thermo right, right. nuclear fission, they didn't think that it was going to be dropped on people. But nevertheless, it's all perfect. It's all good. What else should people know about that I didn't ask insightful questions about? So one of the other things that I wanted to mention that I really am using crystals that I've noticed crystal has helped me do, like, again, waking up to this crystal consciousness and incorporating it into my life has helped me attune to the um, the natural rhythms of nature, mm-hmm. right? So there's a couple different versions of time. We have a, a natural body time. Mm-hmm. Definitely the women know exactly what I'm talking about, but everyone listening probably has an idea. Like our bodies have a rhythm. Even just we sleep every, you know, every certain amount of hours. Like uh, we have to eat, we go to the bathroom. Like our bodies have a natural sense of time. Um, nature, the seasons, the sun and the moon, all of that is an, is nature's sense of time. And the two are very connected. Our Gregorian calendar, of course, it disrupts that um, and I think that myself and a lot of other people, particularly women, um, this throws you off and this, it seems subtle and it, it we just take it for granted because we were born into this Gregorian calendar and, and clock and everything. It can really mess you up when you start retuning yourself to the natural rhythms, which I know can be hard if you have like a nine to five, um, everything gets better. It just feels so much better. Like I haven't. I haven't paid attention to weekends or weekdays in in years. Like it's meaningless to me. And I have the luxury of being able to do that because of my job. Right. Um, And when I haven't had that luxury, the crystals, because they are these condensed uh, versions of physical energy Mm -hmm. can help you just feel those rhythms and, and be more in tune with, with nature rather than like, it's Saturday and Monday is, you know what I mean? I've lost all sense of time here. 
Yeah. Truthfully. I mean, I only know because there's things I have to do on. Right. Yeah. Days. You have to pay it. You have to, you still have to live in the real world. We don't have to, but it, I would recommend it. No, I mean, you, the, the Ram Dass quote is, is like, you can realize your God, but it's still good to know your zip code. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, um, but the, the crystals can help you if you're, if you're wanting to do that, but you're not exactly sure how, um, crystals can help connect you to that. You have an intuitive understanding and connection with nature and the crystals can help you unlock that. And it, it again, it feels very soothing. Everything starts to yeah. fall into place once you can, uh, be more aware of those rhythms. Yeah. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Well, I think people should just be imagining that they have a lot of crystals around them. That's the move. Definitely. Because <laughs> crystals are awesome. They are pretty great. And I do now, like I, I have for the past, however long, whenever I've traveled, even if it's just an overnight somewhere, I always bring crystals with me and I always keep three. Sometimes they change, but I keep three in my uh, tarot box where I keep two decks and mm -hmm. travel with them. And I don't even like it. Like this astrology was like this for me for a long time where like I was kind of on the periphery of it. I was really interested in it, but I couldn't understand it. S crystals and stones now I feel like is the next thing that's kind of breaking through into my consciousness. So I'm excited to learn more about them and their kind of like individual functionalities and properties because um, one of my favorite decks that I use, the Threads of Fate, there is a series of cards where they recommend not only crystals and stones um, with the card, but also like plants, like a plant yep. and an animal on some of them. And I just was like, wow, that's fucking smart. And it, that's like, that's probably outside of the Rider Wake, that's my favorite deck by far. Nice. It's just so good. So, yeah. All right. Is there anything else? Um, I don't think so. If anyone listening hasn't tried a sound healing, oh, find yeah. a sound bath near you and, you know, enjoy that. Enjoy that experience. Where can people tune into what you're doing in general? You do other stuff. I mean, we didn't even talk about it. Well, the next time we'll talk about the spirits. The, the, the alcohol spirits, not the, alcohol the, the spirits, ethereal yeah. spirits. Right. <laughs> Although, is there really a difference? Um, so, well, yeah, there. I'm in in January. I have a couple of um, events coming up where I will actually be combining cool. uh, mezcal uh, with infusions and sound bath. Yeah, because uh, you're the mezcal queen. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. I tell everyone this and I think like, you know, mezcal's gotten so popular. Yeah. That I think when I'd say like, oh no, my sister's like real like she goes to Oaxaca. She like she really does this shit. They're like, Yeah, sure, whatever everyone's doing. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. And they're very connected. So the regions that I go to now, Michoacan and Durango, um, there's a place called uh Piedras de Lumbre, which is like mm. basically like um like flint stone, yeah. but all over these areas, I when I'm walking around in the agave fields, I always look down, um, especially in Durango, a big mining community. I pick up so many pieces of quartz and apophyllite, and I walk away from these like magical mezcal regions with my pockets so and bags cool. full of of quartz that I just find in the ground. That's it's, cool. It's really cool. Yeah, really I have a cool. whole collection of of uh, things from from those regions. Where do people connect with you? Um, you can connect with me. I think Instagram is probably yeah, the best. To, yeah, to to stay current. Um, Tess Rose two one one. Yeah, and then cool. I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll post most of my stuff there. But uh, whether it's mezcal or sound stuff, it's it. I'd, I'd like to combine them as much as possible, but they're separate as well. So awesome. We'll do this again soon. Yeah. Thanks, Tess. Well, thank you.
Thanks for listening to that episode. If you liked what you heard, go check out Tess on Instagram, Tess Rose. 211. Uh, she talks about Mescal. She does, if you're in the New York City area or interested in Mescal in general, she is probably the best person you could ever meet, truthfully. Um, she does tours down with her friend Farron in Durango. I know they're doing something soon. I'm probably going to link up with them in the not too distant future and also do something synchronicity related. Um, Mescal, I'm telling you, it's the coolest, but also crystals. Tune in. Tess knows her shit. Um, and it's just like, you know, I was just talking about this with my friend. You know, uh, crystals, if you use them as like the thing and that, oh, they're going to save you, they're going to save you, that's probably not going to work. But if you recognize the true power of who you are, crystals become quite helpful and quite useful because they are crystallized consciousness and that can help us when we know who we are. So anyway, expect more related to that. That's it for this episode. If you like this podcast, rate and review it. Share it with a friend, your weird friends who would like this stuff. Uh, Smoke weed. Have a good time. I don't know. That's good advice. Uh, Soon. uh, I'm going to have a solo episode that you guys are really going to enjoy expanding on some of the love yourself stuff because I am getting it's coming through loud and clear that people need to hear this. Um, So and we also have some Q&A. I think there's another six or seven questions that's that have come in. Uh, so we'll be doing with those and that'll probably be out. I want to say Monday, everyone have an amazing Thanksgiving, whether you celebrate or not. Every day is a wonderful day to give thanks and praises Jehovah in this iration. Um, just, it's good. It's a good thing to do. Enjoy it. Love it. Um, that's it. That's it for this episode. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.